Amen. FCS, thank you for this great opportunity to stand before you. And I bring you good news. Now I'm aware, I'm aware that we've been praying and fasting and waiting on the Lord for a long time. And I believe that these are vital ingredients that can make for divine visitation. Now, I want you to know that God has heard your prayer. And this weekend, please help me with the sound. I think I need the volume up. This weekend is going to be your weekend of victory. Many things will change in our lives this weekend. Even over this fellowship, it's going to be a new day. Did you hear what I said? For we look not at the things which we see, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are, in, are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now those things which cannot be seen are the things that God will cause to manifest and to rest upon our lives in this weekend. Do you believe that? And the name of God will truly be glorified. You are going to see the move of God. In the name of Jesus. Once again, I want to say a big thank you to the president and all the escorts. Please give them a big God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I'm so honored to stand before you. And I just pray that God will not disappoint us this weekend. In Jesus' name. Are you ready for tonight? I want you in two minutes to lift your voice and cry to God for a divine visitation. Lift your voice, open your mouth and cry to Jesus. Somebody pray. Somebody raise your voice and pray. Come on, FCS, we are a praying fellowship. Lift your voice. The Bible says they looked to him and they were not ashamed. They looked to him and their faces were enlightened. He said, This poor man cried unto God and he heard him and delivered him from all his fears. Just raise your voice and keep praying. Worthy, you are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy. Worthy, you are. Somebody cry to him, cry to him, cry to him, cry to him, visit me, do something new in my life, as a fellowship raise your voice, Lord we desire a new season, we desire an outpouring, we desire release and abundance of grace, he said he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Somebody talk to me. Shahaparata kabara de bohosia. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Last prayer. I want you to cry to God that everything that God has not planted in your life, tonight let it be uprooted. Let it live your life forever. In the name of Jesus, every burden, every yoke, every weight, every seed that God has not planted, can you raise your voice and cry to Him?
Lord, whatever is in my life that is not your will, tonight let it be rolled away. Let it be lifted. Let it be uprooted. campus let this be a season of divine visitation let your name be glorified in jesus precious name we pray please sit down for a few minutes let's get to the word and then we trust god to close tonight It's going to be a mighty visitation, not only on this fellowship, but on this campus. I hear what I'm saying. This is more than just an FCS program. This is a revival that God wants to do in this campus again. In Psalms 85, I believe in verse 5, he said, Will thou not revive us again? We have waited long enough. We have prayed, we have fasted. We have sought God the best way we know how to. And the Bible declares that he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Tonight, somebody's hunger will be filled. Tonight, somebody will leave this place loaded. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 40. Let's start with the text. The theme for this Will I call it a revival or program this weekend? Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Please permit me, I'm used to screens. Let me open my Bible too here. Isaiah chapter 40 just two scriptures and then we'll be done tonight and then we'll pray isaiah chapter 40 from verse 30 let's read from verse 28 actually it says have you not known i'm reading from new king james translation have you not known have you not heard the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength even the youth shall wait, shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Now where we read from the verse we started our reading, the scripture declares to us that the God that we serve is a God that neither faints nor is weary. It means, therefore, 
that God being immortal, God being spiritual, is not overwhelmed or caught up with the weaknesses that we experience as human beings. Please give me your undivided attention for the next few minutes. It is natural for a human being to be weak. It is natural for a human being to be weary. It is natural for a human being, a human being to faint. There is a threshold level that our strength can get to as human beings. But not with God. When it comes to strength, when it comes to power, when it comes to capacity, when it comes to ability, there is no measuring how much exists in God. And so the writer of this passage began by making us understand that one of the qualities of the God that we serve is that He neither faints nor is weary. And it is possible for you to get to that place in God and tap into that unlimited power, unlimited supply of strength, of power and grace, where you too will be able to override the weaknesses of the flesh. You too will be able to override the insufficiencies of your humanity. Where you too will be able to override the inefficiencies of your mortality. One major problem with humanity is lack of consistency. It is almost impossible for us to be consistent in anything. Now the Bible says that the God that we serve neither faints nor is weary. The scripture continues by declaring that He gives power to the weak. And to those who are without might, He increases strength. Remember in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 it says, Finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might or in his mighty power. That God is able to increase your strength. God is able to increase your capacity. God is able to increase your performance beyond where you are. Every time life plays you to a point where you have given all that you can give. You have exhibited all that you have left and there is no more reserve. The Bible says he giveth power to the weak. Not to the strong, to the weak. Therefore it is important that every time we become weary as far as our journey through life is concerned, every time we become fed up or we begin to faint, or we begin to experience insufficiencies when our humanity begins to play in one major example is in the place of prayer as I counsel a lot of young people again and again it's almost a repeated statement my prayer life what can I do to always be on fire and I don't blame them when they are at that point because I was there once you see that is the reason why revelation is needed in the kingdom everything that you call a weakness that you call an insufficiency everything that you feel is limited as far as your existence is concerned is only limited based on your approach or perspective the God that we serve is an unlimited God there is no extent to which his power can be measured. The Bible calls it immeasurable. So if there is a limitation around our lives, it is only based on the concept that we have of limitation. It is only based on what we know. Probably the knowledge that should bring us into a place of sufficiency is not there. And that is the reason why every time you experience weakness, every time you experience insufficiency, every time you experience lack in any kind, one of the keys that will switch you on to tap into God's all-sufficiency and experience an overflow of grace is revelation. You will need to have a knowing and understanding that this thing that is a problem with you is nothing before God. Did the Bible not say, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, 
If you read your Bible, that's how it puts it. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, not before another person, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made as flat as a plain. That means it is a mountain to every other person, but there's a revelation of God that Zerubbabel has caught. And the revelation was in the verse before, verse 6. It said, Thus said the Lord unto Zerubbabel, his servant, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Then the next verse says, Who art thou, O great mountain? The reason why it is no longer a mountain for Zerubbabel is because Zerubbabel is no longer operating based on his might or his power. He's no longer operating based on his ability. There is a place where your natural ability will fail as a human being. There is a place where your intellect will be tested to its limit. There is a place where the, the, the greatest capacity or the greatest ability that you have as a human being will be tested. Life is designed to bring you to that point. In fact, that you will always go through that phase as far as life is concerned. Whether in your finances, whether in your academics, whether in relationships, whether in your call, in your ministry, whether in your work with God, there is a place where everything that you knew will be tested. And it will look like you have given everything you can and yet nothing seems to work out. It is at that place that the Bible says He giveth power to the weak. And to them that are without might, he increases. That's the kind of God we serve. The God we serve is not a user and a dumper of men. He's a user and a refresher of men. He's a user and a lifter of men. When God calls a man, he doesn't look at what you have in the natural, no. He doesn't look at any kind of ability you have, no. The God we serve is all-sufficient. When he calls a man, he is determined to ensure that that man puts his trust in him. So that he will equip that man and make him a vessel that will carry his glory. That's why Paul said, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. So when God called you, he didn't look at any natural talent or ability you had. In fact, he knew that those things would even stand in the place of God being used, or, or God using you. He knew that there is a place where those things will be tested to their limit. And that is why beyond what you have or what you know, there is a grace abundantly released from God that is able to quicken you, that is able to increase your capacity, that is able to push you to go above the limits to a place of being unlimited. The Bible says he gives power to the weak and to them that are without might he increases in strength. He says even the youth shall be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. <laughs> These two groups of people mentioned in scripture are the strongest as far as life is concerned. The youth and then specifically the young men. Can I ask, can I tell you why it is important to know or maybe you must have discovered that God seems to be more interested in using young people than elderly people. Is that true? And sadly or surprisingly, whichever way you put it, Satan is also interested in using young people than any other age group. Is that true? That's why social media was designed. That's why every kind of distraction we have was designed. And we are living in the last days. There is a regrouping. There is an army that is being raised. It, it, where you choose to fall in is what will determine your scope of the fulfillment of purpose as far as life is concerned. Either you stand with the army of God or you stand with the army of Satan which is in the world. Now the Bible says that even though young people are known for strength, Scripture declares that the glory of the young man is his strength. And the glory of the old is their gray hair. It speaks of experience. It speaks of wisdom. Even though with the young is strength. Even though with the youth is energy. The Bible says there is a point where even the youth will be weary. And the young men will utterly fall. This night God wants to refresh in some of us. 
you have used up your capacity as a human being. You have tried everything that you can about that situation that you are in, but nothing seems to be working. Some of you have even exhausted every spiritual principle that you can think of. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have sown seed, you have gone for the anointing to be placed on you, hands have been laid on you, but it seems like you are moving in a cycle. There seems not to be advancement. The Bible says, even the youth shall be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. It says, but they that wait on the Lord, they that wait on the Lord, You know, as young people, we have a lot of energy. We have a lot of drive. And anything that we want to do or anything that we desire to do, we want to do it quickly. Is that true? We live, in fact, we live in a generation of speed. This 21st century that we are living in is a generation of speed. Everything is fast. As a matter of fact, if you want to make money, you need to know how to beat time. Whatever kind of business that you will do. Anything that you will do that must sell, that will make you wealthy and will make you take advantage of the resources in this age, you must know how to beat time. You must include speed. Did you hear what I'm saying? Now, I just gave somebody a business idea. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? If you know how to beat speed in anything you are doing, you will become relevant in this generation. But, the Bible says that for God to give you speed, He will keep you waiting on Him. At least God should have just allowed you to take off. Since there is no time, you need to fulfill destiny. You need to fulfill your purpose. You are already 20 years. You are already 25 years. You are 18 years already. Some of you may even be more than that. There is no time. There is haste. At least let me just rush and do it very quickly. Yet God is saying that if you need my strength to do my work, then you must wait on me. So the strategy for speed in the kingdom is delay. You didn't hear what I said. <laughs> so for God to increase your speed, what he will do is he will delay you first and allow others to go ahead of you and then people who you are even better than people who you began before it seems as though they will run past you and they are on their way to destiny and then god keeps you at one spot for years and you are like god what is the problem in fact i spoke with somebody recently and the person said i felt that god was punishing me i said no <laughs> god does not do that no God may chastise his own, but God does not punish his own. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The one who is punished is Satan and his, his, his demons and wicked people. What God does to the believer is he chastises the believer. Chastisement is correction, not punishment. God, why am I still here? God, why did I repeat this class? The more I keep praying for an increase in my grade, the more it seems the grades are falling. What is happening around me? Yet, every time you come for fellowship, you feel the presence of God. Every time you go to pray, God will be speaking to you. But why are you not talking about this thing? They that wait. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if you are here and you have, you have ever experienced that in your life where god seems to be silent over a very important issue let me just tell you that is one of the greatest signs that the hand of god is on your life for an extraordinary destiny i say to you by experience one of my mentors said to me he said no general in the army releases his best men at the beginning of the battle no remember the the, the miracle of the wine in cana john chapter 2 when the water was turned into wine, what did the master of the ceremony tell the, bri the bridegroom? He said, every man serves the best wine first. And then when everybody is drunk, he said, they bring out the common wine. He said, but you have saved the best for last. God sent me to say to somebody here, 
that the reason why you are still at that spot is because he is saving you as his best for the last. I didn't hear your amen. There's a story in 2 Samuel chapter 18. When Absalom was killed in battle. You remember that story? Absalom and his men and Israel were fighting David and his men. There's a story. The Bible says when Absalom was killed, there was a young man called Ahimaaz who was standing with Joab. Joab was the commander of the army of, of, Israel, of, 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 of Israel. And when Ahimaaz saw what had happened, he came to Joab and he said, Look at all that has happened today. God has given us victory. He said, Allow me to run with this news and meet King David. Joab said, Son, you are not going to run today. Relax. Now, Ahimaaz, if you read 2 Samuel chapter 17, when David departed from Israel for fear of Absalom, his son, Ahimaaz was one of the sons of the priest that was sent to always take news from the palace to David. Ahimaaz was a good sprinter. He was a good runner. How many of you are into athletics here? How many of you run here? Good. He was a very, if you need a message to be delivered very fast, you have to look for Amos. Now, there is a message of victory that should be delivered as soon as possible. And Joab said, you are not going to run. Joab now called another guy whose name was Cushai. Joab said, you will take the message to the king. And that guy ran. Ahima still came to David. He said, let me at least run. He came to Joab. He said, let me at least run. Even if I'm not going with any message, let me just run. And there are those like that in the kingdom. God has not called them. God only flashed them. God didn't call them. They call themselves. There are those whom God is still training and equipping. But they want to run out and be sent. You know there are three stages to fulfilling your divine purpose. There is the stage of the calling. There is a stage of being with him, remaining with him, and then there's a stage where he sends you. Most times we mistake the call for sending. Mark chapter 3 verse 14, he said, And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them. The first time the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha, was not in 2 Kings chapter 2. It was in 1 Kings chapter 19. When Elijah, when God told Elijah, he said, go and anoint Elisha to be prophet in your room. Did Elijah anoint him? No. He simply casted his mantle on him and left. That was a call to come and learn. That was a call for service. Only God, Elisha didn't know that that would take over 19 years. So most times we mistake the call for sending. No. And you know one thing with the callings of God, eh? it comes with heavy burdens. And can I help somebody here? Those burdens will never reduce till Jesus comes. Did you hear what I said to you? I know that you are feeling the body very strong. Like you will explode. Let me tell calm down. <laughs> the body will, it will continue like that. It never reduces you. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. That was what a mentor of mine told me years ago. The Bible says, they that wait. And eventually in that story, Ahimaaz ran and he outran the Kushite. Ahimaaz belongs to the generation of those who want to work for God. Those who want to do everything for God. Those who feel that they are the MOGs and the WOGs. Those who feel that God must use them. And I have no problem with that. Those who want their voice to be heard by all means. Let me tell you something. If pride or if fame or influence is your motive, eh, God will keep you on that spot for a long time. You see, the God we serve is a God that cannot be deceived. The Bible says, I the Lord search the heart. You will not tell God where your heart is or what your heart is saying. Even you don't know what is in your heart. Elisha spoke to one guy. Hazel was his name. And told Hazel, he said, I've seen how you will destroy the children of Israel. You will do this and this and do that. Hazel said, me, a dead dog, by the very next day, he was the one who killed his master. God, anoint me. And I will be humble. You wait first. 
He knew you before you were formed. He knew you before you were born. He knows who will be humble. The Bible says in Romans chapter 9 that even before they were born, speaking of Esau and Jacob, he knew their outcome and he said to them, Esau have I hated and Jacob have I loved. Not really because God wanted to hate Esau, but God was only speaking from their end. So Ahimaaz belongs to that generation that will not allow God to use to work on them. That will not allow God to chisel them, to take them through process. He, that generation that is not ready to keep staying in the place of prayer even when there is no result. You know there are seasons where the burden for prayer will come in your life. God will not even give you prayer point. You will just find yourself praying continually. Have you been there before? Every day you are just going to the ground to pray. Every day. No prayer point, nothing. When will the body end? And the Bible says, Ahimaaz, he knew all the shortcuts. And he outran the one who had the message. And he got to David. Sadly enough, when he got to David and they asked him about Absalom, he had no message. What did David say? He said, stand aside. Until the man that had the message came. We have been praying and waiting on God for 40 days. I want you to know that every time God will move in a territory, there has to be a separation, a seclusion of men that are ready to stay and wait upon His will. Jesus told them, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Don't rush out and begin to preach immediately. No. He said, wait until there is sufficient empowerment from above. God's strategy for speed, for advancement, for strength is waiting on Him. And we are here this weekend because for some of you who have waited on God long enough, it is time for you to mount up with wings as eagles. It is interesting as we pray. It is interesting that they that wait upon the Lord, that's what scripture says. He said, He shall renew their strength. He said, Then they shall mount up with wings. Other people ran ahead of them, other people walked ahead of them. But when it was time for them to move, God says, Instead of walking or running, if you walk or you run, you can't catch up with the ones that have gone ahead of you. Rather, fly, mount up with wings as eagles. I hope you know that as fast as a car is, it cannot beat the speed of a jet. Did you hear what I'm saying? So for God to make up for the time that you, that you think has been lost, is that He gives you sudden flight in the Spirit. The Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19, He said, The Lord is my strength. He said, The Lord will make my feet like the feet of a deer and set me on my high places. For some of you, God wants you to go higher in the spirit. For some of you, God wants to introduce you to higher versions of yourself. This is not the best of you. There is a power side of you that you have not encountered. Now you struggle in the place of prayer. You can't even last for 30 minutes. Do you know that there is a side of you that can stay for 9 hours? Do you know there is a version of you that can heal the sick? Do you know there is a version of you that can cause campus-wide, territorial-wide revival? Do you know there is a version of you that can make devils flee, even though this version now is being tormented by devils? But how do you get to that point? We must empty ourselves and wait upon Him. I'm going to make an altar call, but before that altar call, I want to share a brief story with you. Years ago, when we were on campus, when I came into this territory, I made it a habit to just seek the face of God. Just raising an altar of prayer, going every night to pray, every night, 7 to 10, every night. Eventually it became 12, like that. So do all the school work during the day, then in the night we'll go and pray. There was no prayer point. We'll just go and pray until there is a release in our spirit. That continued first semester, second semester, 200 level, 300 level. By 300 level, we had become about six of us. We meet to pray like that. 
I want you to know that all through that period, nobody knew me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No. That's not how God makes men. He makes men in the secret. So those of you that want popularity and... <laughs> no, 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 no. This, 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 the key, the secret to it is remain in the secret with God. For three years, we kept praying like every night. Some guys tried to join us. They couldn't last one night. So they left us. That kind of prayer life is not popular. And we continued like that. When we entered final year, it was as if the heavens opened suddenly over the campus. That time I didn't even know I was anointed. I was an instrumentalist. So I would play instrument after service in the night. I would sneak to the ground and go and pray. And then come back. So everybody knew me as an instrumentalist. When we entered final year, a grace came on my life. I didn't know. 24th of December 2016, I'm giving you dates now. I went to preach here. All saints, here. They had a concert. So they said, I'll preach for 10 minutes. When I came in, praise and worship, the whole place was upside down. As soon as I held the mic and began to sing, the power of God broke out in that place. When I opened my eyes, I saw half of the people on the ground. Out of fear, I dropped the mic and ran away. That was the end of the message. What do you want to preach there? And that began a move of God. And there were many things that we saw in our time. That I prayed to God that after this weekend, you will begin to see it on this campus again. We saw the supernatural, I tell you. We saw healings, we saw miracles. In a normal prayer meeting like this, a lady sat on my chair where I was sitting down to pray and cancer from her breast disappeared. It was not a, just a small prayer group like that. And that has stayed till today. Do you want to see the move of God again in your time? Then it's time for us to open up our hearts and allow God to come in again. Let's throw away all our agenda and allow God to use us. It's all about His glory. It is not about self. As long as His will will be done, and his name will be glorified. Father, thank you tonight. Please be upstanding. Come and take your place, O oh Lord. Come and take your place, O Lord, in my life. Come and take your place in my life. Come and take. Let's sing it one more time. Come and take your place, oh Lord. Sing it to Him. Come and play. Take your place, oh Lord. In our hearts, come and take your place. Peace.